I almost put almond milk in my cocktail. What were you meaning to put in? Grapefruit juice. <laughs> Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Pretty good. Tonight on the show, we're gonna teach you how to make a Reese cup fudge. It looks like this. <laughs> do, 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 do. Ashley, who are you and how did you end up on the show? Hi, I'm a hair repair from Twitch and Instagram, and Facebook, and all of the other social medias. And I generally crochet, but this is a recipe that my mom stole from the back of the can and then I added a bunch of stuff to it after she added a bunch of stuff to it, and that's how Americans cook. Cool. Yeah. Anecdote. My wife, Courtney, God bless her, is not a big fan of the Twitch platform, but she specifically cites that she get kind of gets it now. Where she's like, I understand that it is cool to watch someone do some crafts on a stream. And that's specifically because she saw you doing it. Mm. Okay, teach us how to make fudge. I can't bake. So the first thing to do is to unwrap a pan full of Reese's. Wow, you really are really close to my face. Like enough Reese's to fit into a pan. You don't want them edge to edge because it will be very, very sweet. And as a person who really, really likes sugar, it just trust me, it's too much. Can you demonstrate how to unwrap one of these? <laughs> is that why there's an empty spot? <laughs> That's why there's an empty spot. I prefer the little ones to the like large round ones just because they melt a little bit less. So you wanna make sure that you unwrap those and set them in your pan because you will not have time to do them later. The other thing that you have to have to have is a candy thermometer and jet puffed. Just trust me, only use this kind. If you use regular marshmallow cream, it doesn't set up right. Um, just, to, just to interrupt needlessly and provide useless commentary, I also prefer eating those mini Reese cups to the bigger ones because I think the height to width ratio is, is more enjoyable. That's how Reese Cup should have been from the start. And then I also recommend that you do the top side down because when they melt, they're gonna disperse. Highly recommend the Reese's chips bags. The recipe on the jar calls for three, four ounce bags of them. I use like one and three quarters of a 10 ounce bag. So it is a little bit more. What were those numbers? I use one and three quarters oh, of a 10 ounce bag. So, so seven eighths? Of 10? <laughs> no. So 70, 70 80ths of a, of a bag? Is that? No, that's not right. 70 over, yeah, 70, 80, right? <laughs> How does that reduce? Is that just 7 eighths? <laughs> So 15 ounces of Reese's peanut butter cups, which would have been a lot easier if I had said 20 ounces, three quarters of that. Dump it into a bag, and I'm gonna do this super scientifically here and just hold back a quarter of the bag. <laughs> so I do that and then push your chips up around the edge here so that your marshmallow fluff and also eventually vanilla will just sit on top of it. And the whole reason that you wanna do that is so that when you're you get to the point where you hit the 234 degrees, you wanna just be able to take this and dump it in. And if all of these are on the edges and your marshmallow sets in the center of it, it's just gonna slide out. So it's not gonna to stick to anything, you're not gonna be fighting with jars, burning your fudge or yourself. This sounds complicated. It's not as bad as you're making it seem, I promise. There's a temperature. There's a temperature. It's not a round number. And well, no. You might, you might <laughs> f it up. Okay, now. so if you, if I'm you. do worry. <laughs> That was one teaspoon of vanilla. All of that goes into here before you start boiling your sugar and your butter because when it gets to that 234 degrees, you want it to move quickly because it is going to burn to the bottom of your pan and you don't want that to happen. So all of this goes in here and that way you just dump it in one go and it's quick. So now we have three cups of sugar and three quarters of a cup of margarine, which if I remember it is a stick and a half. And that'll go into the pot to be boiled until your candy thermometer reaches 234 degrees. Hey, Ash. What you sipping on? Cider Geist. Is that an apple juice? No, it's an adult apple juice. It's actually pretty good though, I do like it. Meow. All right, so there's the other half a stick. So, but we're not gonna turn that on just yet, and we're going to put the sugar in there. <laughs> Measuring out three cups of sugar to go into. That's a lot pot. of sugar. It is a lot of sugar, and whenever I get compliments on this recipe, people are like, how do you make it? And I'm like, I don't know if you wanna know. It's best that you it's, know. It's best that you just don't ask questions and eat it. Now we sizzle. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. 
So now that this is in here, we don't need the candy thermometer just yet because it's not gonna be anywhere near 234 degrees. This is going to boil down to a liquid and it does need to be stirred constantly. If you do not stir it constantly, it's going to burn to the bottom and you're gonna have nice chunky bits in your fudge. So I'm gonna keep this constantly moving. I did forget a thing. Oh, the evaporated milk. Definitely evaporated milk, not sweetened condensed milk. If you put in anything else, you're absolutely going to ruin your fudge. So this also goes in here. How many ounces is that? Five. So this is what this is gonna look like for the vast majority of the, I mean, outside of the chunks, those are gonna break down. It's going to start boiling and you'll see the sugar is going to become a lot more smooth. I'll wait to put the candy thermometer in there until our butter is broken down, but you wanna keep your sugar off the sides and then make sure that the bottom is moving. Always move your bottom. All right, it has been a couple minutes. We are just at the point of this hitting 234 degrees Fahrenheit and we're gonna pull it off of the eye and then turn the eye off. This is the part that's a little messy, especially if you've dropped your thermometer into your sugar mixture like I have. And then this is where that part with the bowl comes in. Cooking this by yourself can get tedious because this is the point where this needs to go in right now. It's action time! So now that that's in there like that, you just stir all of this together. It is going to start to thicken up and become firmer while you're stirring. You just want to keep it moving for as long as you can until it's all mixed together. Looks great. Look at that. This is very, very hot, so you want to keep it away, obviously, right, from... It's probably less than 234 degrees, though. You want to keep stirring this until all of your marshmallow is incorporated. That's a really good way to tell whether or not it's stirred enough. And so once all of those white swirls are gone, like they almost are, you can see one right here, just keep this moving and you want to keep it off the edges of your pan, or your pot, rather. If you had to incorporate that fudge in any particular state, for tax reasons, which state would it be? I have no idea. Also, I don't have a whole lot of time. We need to put this over here. You wanna be careful because if you get it on yourself, you are going to burn yourself and then just kind of pour it as evenly as you can. It should come off relatively easily from your pan because it's starting to thicken. Just like your mama? She keeps eating this fudge, it will. And then that's it. From here, I recommend putting it in the fridge. You don't have to to get it to set, but it will set faster. The reason that I use these pans is because I cut the edges and fold it down so that you're not fighting trying to get a solidified candy out of a 13 by 9 inch pan. The alternative to that, if you don't want to be super wasteful, is to get aluminum foil and just sink it down into your, your 13 by 9 inch pan and then you can lift it out and then cut your fudge that way. But I definitely recommend putting it in the fridge for anywhere from 5 to 30 minutes and it'll firm up and then you can cut it a little bit easier and then you can plate it and that's it. Could you achieve the same effect as the cutting effect by using a porcelain 9 by 8 13 and a sledgehammer? No. That looks great. It's already starting to solidify a little bit. Like you can see if you move it, there's like small cracks on the, the surface. If it's doing that for you, then you know it's gonna set up. I'm putting it in the fridge and I'm do it using creative architecture <laughs> to hold up the pan. So right now it's being held up by two kombuchas and a jar of pickles. And if if anyone opens that fridge, the whole thing's going down. So no one up the fridge, please. Thank you. We'll be back in five to 30 minutes. <laughs> We're back. It's been five to 30 minutes. <laughs> How do I fake this? <laughs> Just be like, oh, this fudge is ready. And for our presentation purposes, we're gonna cut a little section out of it, and then, then there'll be movie magic, and then you won't have to worry about it. Yeah, what Phil said. So normally what I would do to cut all of this at one time is to cut these corners with kitchen shears and then cut the corners and then pull them down so that you have an easy flat surface. Just make sure you're careful so you don't cut yourself. Outside of that, you can just slice in. You're gonna get a little bit squished when you lift your fudge out. So you can see the top is firming up and then the bottom has your peanut butter cups on it. It's still a little bit warm on the bottom. Well, we're operating on PGC time, which means gotta go fast. <laughs> we gotta wrap this up. Wrap it up before we die. Thank you for this fudge. Oh yeah. Now, I saw how that was made. So I know the price I'm paying for that flavor I'm enjoying. Is but God, good? no, yeah, that's really good. It's very uh, squishy. <laughs> it's fudge. Excellent fudge. I will give it 70 out of eight. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you do it. See you next time. She's never coming back. She'll be back. For pierogies. Yeah. Make us some pierogies, please. The real way.